how are you? I v to say I do. Apu, apu, for you and you and you. Oh 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 oh, because oh, it's been golly. Just. Hey, welcome back to our stupid. <laughs> I'm Rick. You can follow us on Instagram, Twitter for more juicy content. Thank you to our sports on Patreon. Follow uh, us official Twitter account. Subscribe and hit that like button. Why don't you audition for Jason Alexander's Fiddler on the Roof? You look Jewish. I, I could pass for Jewish. No, you couldn't. No, I could. Um, why? Well, no, every, you couldn't. All Jews have big noses, Rick. Is that what you're saying? You look Irish. Racist. Um, it's like saying you could pass for Italian. I've played Jew before. Um. Sure, you have. I have, you know, miscast thing you were in. <laughs> Good Lord, what does the, does Ashley look Jewish? No, she does not. What? Nope. Does does Alexis look Jewish? She looks more Italian. No, she doesn't. She looks more Italian. No. Yes. Ukrainian. Today we got Ukrainian. a. Uh, <laughs> so the uh, the people from Kalki have released a. This is there's two videos we're acting to in this video. One's called the Prelude of Kalki, okay, and then the other one's called the World of Kalki. So they go into a little bit of what it's based off of. So we okay, you know, so you, know, you have based kind off of, of like the right Mahabharata or Mahabharata or great Ramayana, and then um, a little bit into the world, just so everybody has a little background about uh, what's so are, going on. Are we going to get as far as the World of Kalki? We're going to get some production design, yes. art direction. Yeah, 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 great, yeah, yeah, yeah. great. Um, and it's by the director who is technically a dose because he was at the table that we were at with uh, yeah. <laughs> Prabhas and, and uh, Kamala San. Uh, um, we did not know that at the time. Uh, <laughs> but uh, we're dumb. Um, so I, I assume he's not going to give anybody any spoilers in, <laughs> in, uh, yeah, in no. his video. No. Uh, directors don't like to do that. They like you to see their movies. So we're going to start with uh, the prelude of Kalki here. All right. How the first chapter of our world is going to look like. In India, we've grown up with epics, especially Mahabharata and Ramayana. Another age to go, and that age is the final battle. In India, we've grown up with so much of the epics, especially Mahabharata and Ramayana, being part of our culture and everyday life. Like, especially uh, not just religious, but just like even. Just stories that we tell our kids, and so you know, when you grow up and you're watching uh, a lot of, I guess, foreign films which are in the either comic book space or Marvel or Spider-Man or or Star Wars or any of those things, you always wonder like where are our superheroes because they are as heroic and they are as uh, larger than life as anybody else. Mm -hmm. I think I heard uh, that slowly people across. India were more interested, or they were starting to think about making movies like this. I heard some talk about somebody talking about immortals, and some studio trying to think about it. And I was like, okay, now it's time for us to. And the world of Kalki is something that we are saying is almost like a sequel to the last epic that we have of these characters of the previous yuga. So the previous yuga in India, the in Indian culture, we have four yugas, right? So. Each yuga has a sort of a dramatic battle. We were first introduced to that in uh, evil sort of games. A setup, yeah. and, and each time an avatar comes uh, to restore the balance. And uh, the last great epic that we have is the Mahabharata, where it was like a huge war with, uh, you know, the most powerful and the most uh, epic kings, and they fight in this gr dramatic battle, and they are. You know, one side is protected by an avatar, a god figure, which is Krishna. Final epic was the last story that we know, and all of our greatest characters from there have an ending, or some of them have an open ending, or we know that this is where this story ended, but we still have an another age to go, and that age is the final battle. Mm -hmm. That age is where the end essentially has to begin and everything has to come to a climax like all of these stories all of these nine avatars all of these four yugas all of these battles which are small and big that happened since the creation of time has to end somewhere so we tried to see if we could attempt to write that 
and uh, that's how we started. And that's where the last story of our mythology sort of ends. And now we are meant to be in the last age, which is called the Kali Yuga, and we need, we don't really have a story of this era or of this Yuga because it's still happening, obviously. And I just thought it is a very interesting idea if we, if we start writing a sequel to the Mahabharata, what would happen because it ended there and Kali continues from Dwapar Yuga and he has to come into the Kali Yuga. So now if he comes in, now our heroes have to come in as well. And how is this epic going to be? Uh, how are we going to write this? And I wanted to write it in a way that it's today and it's for the whole world to be part of it now because it's not just... Uh, because it was never, I think, ever just one country. It's always the world. So I thought we'll write it in that sensibility and Hence, uh, five years later, we are here and we are close to uh, being able to share with you how the first part, how the first chapter of our world is going to look like. Cool. Background there. That helps a so lot. So is Big B the Avatar? Or, or is Prabhas the Avatar? Or are they all the Avatars? No idea. Uh, I'm assuming Big B is because he kind of has like this other like godly presence about him and the stuff he can do, at least in the trailers that we've seen, right? And so this one is called The World of Kolki. Kashi or Varnashi is said to be the first place was born. It was the idea of like what if our story ended here? The story is basically between these three. So Kashi or Varnashi is said to be the first uh, place where civilization was born in this world, like, you know, by the banks of the river Ganga. That's written in a lot of our uh, books and uh, scriptures. It was the idea of, like, what if our story ended here? Like, if that was the first city, like, what if this world now has only one city left and everybody in the world and all the resources and all the major conflict now happens here in Kasi. So that was the setting for Kalki. And uh, now we are in a world where the most life-giving river, the Ganga, is dry. And people in Kasi are just living uh, in just like a very brutal survival of the fittest sort of way. And above them, tower is the complex like uh, maybe you guys have seen in the trailer or something like this massive mega city sort of structure like an inverted pyramid that is a kilometer into the sky so that is the complex which has essentially everything it's like paradise it has all the greenery resources water food animals everything that is not there in the world before. It's almost like a microcosm of what the world used to be like. And now it's the story is mainly set up here. It's between these two worlds, the people who are in the complex who control those resources and the people who are below in Kasi who don't have access. And, and these people in Kasi only just have a dream to enter the complex. In a way, it becomes a cycle. So for you to do the work to earn money to get into the complex is like one trap that you end up working for the complex mm. and you finish your life before you can actually get in. So it's like one sort of a cycle which is sort of something that happens today as well. Apart from these two worlds, there's also a third world which we call Shambhala. Shambhala is something that we hear in many cultures, like even in Tibetan culture it's called Shangri-La and every culture has a name which is a mystical land which is hidden from the world and that's where some people say advanced being, some people say the avatar, some people say many things like how the name Shambhala itself is very connected to the myth of Kalki, to the legend of Kalki because it said that this is where the final avatar will come. That is the most uh, powerful and that is the most familiar thing about the Kalki story. So these are our three worlds and each of these worlds have uh, a design or a thought process behind it. The complex people and the weapons and their vehicles are designed in a certain way because of what they have. People in Kasi are designed a certain way because of what they have. The world, you know, there's money which is units and they are bounty hunters who need these units uh, to get their job done or to finish their aspiration to want to go into the complex. 
and there's this third world which is Shambhala, which is essentially the refuge. Uh, it's like a massive refugee camp in a way, like for all the religions and all the cultures that have been hunted down in this world by the complex. So they all needed a place to hide. The people in Shambhala are are part refugees, part rebels, part the resistance who are fighting uh, the complex. So the story is basically between these three worlds and uh, each of them are very unique in their own way and how their paths cross and how the story goes forward. Cool. Heck of a Kashi world. Heck of a world they're building. Yeah. Um, it's almost um, you know, very different in the sense, but um, it, it happens in a lot of fantasy books. It's happening in one I'm reading right now called The Red Rising, um, where basically it probably looks like the elites are living in this one part. Yeah. Everybody else is probably working for them and yeah. so are slaves and yeah. try to get to there, but they're all just greedy. You right, know, rich people, uh, but obviously in this one, there's also a, um, a spiritual element. There's a, there's a, a mythical world here, and so it's one of the things we've talked about for the longest longest time. India has so many stories, yeah, <laughs> and they're just history and religion, and um, that 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 they've just grown up with that would make great superhero style films. Yes, and we're trying, we're starting to get there with how much their money they're putting into it. Yeah, um, because a lot of these you'll need like heavy CGI budgets um, to make it look correct. And from everything we've seen, this film looks really, really. It nice. really, really does. Yeah, and it, there's other. It reminds me only a little bit, not as a copy. Just there's a, there's a couple of things that are slight reminders of. I don't know if you've seen any episodes of the the Apple show Foundation. Oh, with uh, with uh, Kubra, Kubra. No, yeah, I it's very good. Yeah. It's a very good sci-fi show. Yeah. And um, what you said also about films, there's a, another film that's not considered sci-fi, it's considered horror, that has to do with a metaphor about society. Mm -hmm. It's the Spanish film The Platform. I haven't seen it. You need to be prepared for that one, kids. First of all, it's not for kids. Don't let children see it. And if you have a weak stomach, if you don't, if you can't handle the grotesque, you won't like it. Yeah. If you can, it's brilliant. And I'm really intrigued and I'm thankful. I feel like these two things really do help audiences, especially non-Indian audiences, yeah. get some level of framework All coming the Indians into this. Know this story. Yeah. So I feel better prepared now coming yeah. in without spoilers to yeah. appreciate this and not have to try to figure things out as much at the very outset. Because, yeah. like, stuff, it happens all the time in films. Stuff happens, and Indians know exactly what it's they're right. doing. And we're like, why do they do that? Right. Like, for example, if we were to watch a scene from something and you see an axe head fall in the water and it rises back up to the top, that's something from the Old Testament. That's one of the prophets does something with an axe head. Mm -hmm. You you guys wouldn't necessarily know what that means. Unless, obviously, you're uh, unless you uh, Right, unless you know that. Um, but there's so many things along those lines. And that's the thing is, it's not just a religious thing, it's cultural. Yeah. Because he even said that. He said, irrespective of what you might believe uh, on a religious and spiritual, it's it's definitively cultural for all Indians to be aware of these stories. So that's our... Great. Showing. Keep on filling uh, up. And it's IMAX. So. Great. Um, Speaking of filling up, Inside Out 2... I know. The numbers are about to drop. It may have the greatest second weekend of an animated film in history. It's like at a hundred million. Yeah. I helped. I I thought about taking the the kids um to see it and then I, I looked on it would be almost like a hundred dollars to go see it. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, oh wait. It a, would be. If we do it, we'll wait like a month and it's like on those five dollar Tuesdays. Five dollar Tuesdays, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> With other kids, because um it's not cheap to go to the theaters uh, for the big family. No, it's not. Um anyways, that was cool. I'm looking forward to the film. Yep. We're gonna see it on yep. Tuesday. Yep. Uh Wednesday. No, Wednesday. Wednesday, Wednesday night. At six six. See me. see me Valley. If you are in LA. And you'd like to see it with us? That's the theater. And, While there's uh, still seats, we're going to, and we're, it's it's filling up. It's about half full right now, and it's a big theater actually. Um, IMAX is going to be fun. Uh, which is the first IMAX? Is it the first IMAX we've seen there? 
There. We saw Brahmastra in Brubank. Brahmastra, but unfortunately it was 3D. I know. Um, still cool. And that was even a bigger theater than this one. Yes. Um, but hopefully they're not going to change it to 3D last. Minute. Yes, please don't. <laughs> they did that for uh, um, Brahmastra. Yeah. Anyways, looks cool. Let us know any other information we need to know down below. Just